This video is about gas chromatography and gas chromatography is an example of an instrumental method. Um, let's get that bit over the way first of all. Instrumental method just essentially means using a machine. So anything with instrumental in there you need to think about using a machine. So you need to know the advantages of using an instrumental method like gas chromatography other over other methods to um, separate substances and there's three main reasons why instrumental methods are good first of all they are fast they are accurate and they are sensitive and you might expect that as a three mark um, question for example and you need all those points down instrumental methods are fast accurate and sensitive by sensitive um, you mean that you only need small amounts and with those small amounts um, separating a substance would still be fast and accurate. So let's break down um, this diagram of gas um, chromatography machine to try and explain what's going on. First of all the way it gets its name gas is because a gas is used to push the substance that you want to separate through the machine and this gas has got to be unreactive so something like nitrogen okay an unreactive gas because you don't want the gas to react with the sample that you're using and this will be used to push the substance through the column and out the other end the column itself is um, a solid column but obviously there's just enough room for the, the samples and things to actually get through to the other side of the machine. The sample itself that you want to test goes into the machine and then the gas is used to push that substance through a long solid column and out the other side. And when it comes out the other side, the read the reading is displayed on a computer and we'll go into detail about that in a minute. So an example of something that you might want to separate using gas chromatography would be something like a urine sample where you'd want to test to see if an athlete had um, any drugs in its urine. So they provide a small sample of urine even if it's tiny again it's sensitive, um, it's accurate and it's fast so it's really useful for these kind of things. The urine will be placed in the top, it will probably be um, vaporised and turned into a gas itself. And then this carrier gas is used to push the urine sample through the machine and out the other side. So the urine itself, or the sample that you put in, is going to be a mixture of different compounds that you want to separate. That's the whole point of this gas chromatography is it's a way to separate a mixture of compounds. So gas chromatography is the part that separates it. We'll come on to the bit that actually identifies the compounds a little bit later on. So we put our sample in, the gas has carried it through and it comes out the other end. But all the compounds don't come out at the same time. That's how they're separated. In the middle in this column they will be interacting with the column in slightly different ways um, there'll be different size compounds different masses of compounds and they come out at different times and this is um, how we can see how many different compounds are in our sample so if we blow this up here um, and have a look at this example graph this is the strength of the response let's just say response there and this is time so on the computer when your sample is coming through you will see these peaks on a graph on a computer so let's talk about what they mean now first of all the number of peaks tells you how many compounds there are in your sample
So quite simply, um, in our example here, we've got one, two, three, four, five peaks. Therefore, we would have five different compounds in the sample that we'd put in the top of this gas chromatography machine. So that's one thing that you need to be able to read from these graphs, that the number of peaks tell me how tells you how many different compounds there are in your sample. Another thing you need to look at is the strength of res the response tells you how um, abundant those compounds are. So if they're not very high, there's only a little bit of that type of compound. But if the peaks are really high, it will tell you that there is a lot of that compound in there. So the height of the peak, so the height tells you how much of each compound there is, essentially. It doesn't give you a value, it'll just give you an indication how much of each compound there is. Finally, um, you need to be able to read the retention time off of these graphs. The retention time is essentially how long it has been in the chromatography machine. So you use the time on the x-axis here at the bottom to be able to measure the retention time for your samples. So this value here between 0 and um, around 12 on here will tell you the retention time for that sample. And equally, you could do it here, or here, here, and here. And the retention time just tells you how long the sample took to go through the machine. And as we said before, that's exactly what separates it, because different compounds come out at different times because they have a different retention time. So some will go through really quickly, others will take um, a little bit longer. So hopefully you can see now that gas chromatography is a way to separate compounds um, from a mixture of compounds. And on the graph that comes out, we need to read off the, the number of peaks, meaning how many compounds there are in the sample. Um, the heights tell you how much of each compound there is. And from zero to the time along the bottom, in the middle of each peak, will tell you the retention time, so how long it took to go through the machine. Now this picture is called a chromatogram. So these graphs here that come off of a grass chromatography machine are called a chromatogram. Now it's all well and good separating the substances, but you also need to identify the compounds that you've got in your mixtures um, in some cases. So gas chromatography separates it, but it doesn't actually go as far as identifying the compounds that come out. To do that, you need another machine. You need to link a gas chromatography machine to something called a mass spectrometer. So I'll just use this space below here to talk about the mass spectrometer. Now, really importantly, this is used to identify the compounds. So unlike the gas chromatography, which is used to separate the compounds, this is used to actually identify them. And often you link a gas chromatography machine to a mass spectrometer. When you do that, it's called a GC. MS and sometimes it's called GCMS linked. Okay, a gas chromatography linked to a mass spectrometer is called a GCMS, and this will not only separate but it will also identify the compounds that are in your sample. So, for example, if you wanted to identify a particular drug or a particular substance in your sample, you would need to link it to a mass spectrometer machine as well. So sometimes they ask you about that in exams. They say, how can we actually identify the substances? 
we need to use that um, mass spectrometer as well. Now the next little, little bit just goes into a little bit more detail about the mass spectrometer and it is for the higher tier only. So before we looked at gas chromatography and we said that that separates the substances and then we said if we linked a gas chromatography machine to a mass spectrometer which is called a GCMS machine we could then actually identify the substances so mass spectrometer is for the identification of the compounds in your sample and the two machines linked together is called a GCMS now with a mass spectrometer you get um, a different reading out of the computer which can help you actually identify the compounds in your samples and the way you do that is you read the um, molecular mass of a compound off of a graph such as this and the way you do that is you look for the mole molecular ion peak now you don't have to worry too much about what these axes mean and what's going on here all you need to remember is to get the molecular ion peak you look at the far right of these graphs and the last bar that appears even if it's not the highest that doesn't matter you're just looking at the far right hand side of the graph this here is the molecular ion peak Get, and it will tell you the molecular mass of the compound that you have identified. So here, if you look off the bottom of the graph, the molecular ion peak is 70. So by looking at that, we can also know that that is the molecular mass or the relative molecular mass. of the compound that we have separated. So after we've separated the compound using gas chromatography, we can then actually identify it using the mass spectrometer. This gives out um, a graph um, which looks a little bit different to what we've looked at before. And the only thing we need to know about the graphs from a mass spectrometer is it helps us identify the molecular ion peak that is on the far right hand side so always on the far right hand side even if it's not the highest um, bar on the graph look at the far right hand side and that will give us the rel relative molecular mass of the compound which is really useful because then it can help us identify what it is so once you've got this um, relative molecular mass of the compound, you can then work out what it is. Normally they'll give you a couple of different options. For example, they might say, is the compound um, sodium chloride, for example, or is it pentene, for example? and you need to work out the relative formula masses of these to give you your answer. So using the periodic table you can see that the um, relative atomic mass of sodium is 23, relative atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5. So add those together and you get a relative formula mass for sodium chloride of 58 0.5 and that cannot be the compound in question because 58.5 is not close to that 70 there whereas if we looked at pentene we've got 10 lots of hydrogen so it's 10 lots of 1 add that to 5 multiplied by 12 which is the relative atomic mass of carbon so 5 times 12 is 60 and add this together and you get a relative formula mass of 70 
So by having a look at these two different samples, we can see that the sample which has come out of the mass spectrometer is pentene and not sodium chloride. So they, they won't tend to expect you to um, work out from that what the molecule of the compound is because there might be several compounds that have a relative molecular mass of 70. They might give you a slightly easier one and ask you to suggest a compound that it could be or they tend to give you a, a couple of different options and ask you to choose which is the correct molecule that's left the mass spectrometer. Okay, so that's um, gas chromatography linked with mass spectrometer and just to recap for the higher tier you need to be able to read the molecular iron peak from the right hand side of a mass spectrometer graph. That's the relative molecular mass of the compound and you should then use that perhaps in a question to work out which compound has been identified.